Hello, all you lovely people. My name is Dino Spunk, and today I'm going to talk about my favorite headcanon in the entire world, Bisexual Spider-Man. Before I begin, this is your obligatory warning that this video will contain minor spoilers for the 2021 film Spider-Man No Way Home, as well as some associated films. I realize that by now everyone and their mom knows the big drop for this film, but I feel I should put the spoiler warning here nonetheless. This film was, after all, a much better experience for me by going into it completely blind, and if possible, I suggest you do so as well. The date is December 13th, 2021. The long-awaited MCU film Spider-Man No Way Home had just started its release into the world, day by day. By December 17th, anyone who had planned to see it on opening night in their location had seen it. Of course then, what do fans of a series as big as the MCU do after watching such a highly anticipated film? They go to the internet. Here, fans like myself share their excitement of seeing beloved characters and crossovers from other Marvel productions brought to the MCU. Holy cow, I've been so excited to see Doc Ock again. What an incredible scene that was with Daredevil being the Parker family's lawyer. This is all very exciting, yes, but the real conversation starter was the return of Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield to their past roles of alternate universe versions of Peter Parker. I swear, it was like being sent back to 2015. Everyone was, of course, already talking about Andrew Garfield for his phenomenal performance in Tick Tick Boom, however, this was like adding gasoline to an already burning flame. Suddenly, I couldn't scroll five posts without someone talking about him. And listen, I'm not blaming anyone. I have followed the Andrew Garfield category on Twitter. I know I'm part of this, so don't act like I'm offending this. With conversations about Andrew Garfield alongside conversations about his role as Spider-Man, there would of course be discussions about how he viewed his version of Peter Parker. This would include his strong belief that Peter Parker should canonically be bisexual in the Amazing Spider-Man movies. This is something he's been vocal about in the past, and something Sony required him to issue a public apology for, unfortunately, despite Andrew believing it wholeheartedly. Some conclude that this drew a wedge between Garfield and Sony, resulting in the termination of the Amazing Spider-Man series prematurely before its planned third film. Currently, there is a breath of words about Sony being willing to explore this concept in future films, but who knows truly what will happen with that. Andrew Garfield isn't the only one to view Peter Parker as bisexual, as is evident by the huge group of fans who agree with him. The first inclination I remember seeing myself of Peter being headcanoned as bi was this Tumblr post. It features a drawing of Spider-Man holding a bisexual flag, wearing a suit that is colored with the bisexual pride colors. The words next to this image are a parody of the animated Spider-Man series title theme, reworded to title him Biderman. Now, I tried so hard to find when this image was first posted, just for continuity, but for the love of god, I can't date it earlier than 2018. I know for sure I saw this image before then, probably around 2015 or 2016. I did find an embedded Tumblr post in an article that seems to be the original poster, but I can't figure out how to see the date it was posted. I could be being stupid, but either way, that's the earliest reference I had personally remember seeing the bisexual Spider-Man. I've linked the article in the description, so if you want to look at it and see what you can do with it to date it, that would be helpful. This already goes back a handful of years, but an article from CBR states that Archive of Our Own, a fanfiction website, has slash ships, which are male slash male ships, featuring the web slinger dating back to 2002. This is pretty darn impressive for the time, as the main ships featured were with Harry Osborn and Johnny Storm, both characters Peter is still commonly shipped with. So now we have a basic backstory on how bisexual Spider-Man came to be. I think this is fascinating and personally, I now want to dive into the common slash ships he's featured in and see how far back those go. I also want to say I can't speak much on most of these ships as only one of them has an actual shipping wiki page and it happens to be the only one I engage with and know much about. Shipping wiki is a really helpful resource when trying to research ships and their context, but 
If the ship doesn't have a page, then unfortunately you're typically out of luck. I'll try my best to explain them to my ability, but remember I'm generally not a comic reader. I'm mainly coming from this with the knowledge of the movies and shows and one or two of the video games. Also take note of the fact that if I'm trying to find context of a ship on Google and can't find it within a few pages of results, I'm giving up and winging it. Maximum effort and all that shit, you know? So, if there are any errors in my explanations, you'll have to forgive me and politely correct me in the comments. First, let's take a look at one I mentioned a second ago. One of the ones that dates on the internet as far back as 2002. First, we're going to cover Parksporn, or the ship between Peter Parker and Harry Osborn. For those of you who are unfamiliar with Spider-Man media and somehow are interested in today's video topic, I'll give you a rundown on Harry's character. Harry Osborn is the son of Norman Osborn, who most will know as the Green Goblin from the first Tobey Maguire film. I can't speak much about this ship as unfortunately, despite there being an alarming amount of fan content for the pair, there's surprisingly little said online about the history and fans reasoning behind it. I do know that Harry and Peter are established in most, if not all, Spider-Man media types they both appear in as close friends. For those of you who are more familiar with the MCU version of Spider-Man, you could liken Harry Osborn to Ned Leeds. I can see why this dynamic could be fun for shippers, as well as the fact that there is a tragic ending for them where Harry turns against Peter, and afterwards he comes to his senses and Harry is killed trying to save his best friend. This is a classic tragic story that would send shippers into a frenzy, so I could definitely see why this used to be such a popular ship. Nowadays, Harry isn't seen in many Spider-Man media types, but he was in the PlayStation game if that counts. Because of this, I think the amount of fan content has decreased dramatically and fans have moved on to other ships that have more content, rather than having to reuse the same old scenes for their edits and whatnot. Despite this being a dying ship, I think it's pretty cool to see how Spider-Man got his roots in Splash Shipping, definitely something that I think sparked the newer ships I'll cover soon. Next, I want to carry the torch on, if you catch my drift, to the other ship that had been posted on AO3 as far back as 2002, Spidey Torch, or Peter Parker shipped with Johnny Storm. Spidey Torch is one that, despite being around for as long as Parks born, has seemed to not dwindle in popularity. These days, I see a fair bit of Spidey Torch content online, and I'm not even looking for it. However, much like Parksborn, there is very little context given to how the ship started. Johnny Storm is also known as the Human Torch, one of the members of the Fantastic Four. Unfortunately, I don't know much about him outside of that. From what I gather from reading opinion articles online, this ship appeals to the jock slash nerd trope roles carried out by Johnny and Peter respectively. I can vouch for sure that this is a huge fanfiction trope, even if the characters involved don't fit into those stereotypes. I guarantee somewhere there is even a handful or more of fanfics where Johnny and Peter's roles as jock and nerd are swapped. Something about opposing cliques in a high school setting or opposing interests in other settings is just common fodder for adolescent fanfic writers and readers and Johnny and Peter certainly fit the bill. From what I remember of other more recent posts online that I've seen, I think Johnny and Peter also end up living together in the comics for some amount of time. This also fueled the shippers' minds, and this is actually the first thing I had seen about the ship. I remember thinking they were canonically together, and I was ready to celebrate Peter Parker being confirmed bisexual. It doesn't take much for me to think a character is being queer-coded or something similar, but if Spidey Torch is a popular ship, then there must really be something to my reaction. The third, and in my opinion, the rarest pair you'll see on my list, Spidey Devil, or Matt Murdock x Peter Parker. This is something I had never even considered to be a ship until stumbling upon it on a shipping wiki, probably likely because I'm used to the MCU. Like the last two entries, Spidey Devil has no shipping wiki page, and much less fan content to analyze, already making this a difficult one to study. Additionally, there are literally only four pages of results when googling Spidey Devil, and when you look at the first image results from the search all tab, guess what? It's fucking Spidey Torch fan art. So as you can gather, I really can't quite explain the ship to a full extent. Something tells me this ship may become even more buried into the internet now that Daredevil had a cameo in No Way Home. From what I can tell, Spider-Man fans typically aren't huge supporters of shipping MCU Peter with any of the adults that non-MCU Peter may be shipped with, such as Tony Stark, Steve Rogers, or even Wade Wilson. 
that includes Matt Murdock, and I just have some sort of inexplicable feeling that this ship will dwindle as time goes on and Daredevil is more introduced into mainstream MCU fan culture. I also have a hard time wrapping my head around the chemistry that shippers see between these characters. I'm sure if I read the comics or watched Daredevil to understand Murdock's character better, it would come to me easily. However, I literally just can't find anything about people sharing why they think these characters would be good for each other. I am, of course, very open to discussion, don't get me wrong, so if you are watching this right now as a Spidey Devil shipper, please feel free to express your feelings towards the ship, and please educate me. As a huge Spider-Man fan, I'd be delighted to know more about the fan culture. Last, but certainly not least, I'm going to talk about my all-time favorite Spider-Man ship that I've been engaged in since 2015. I have a lot to say about this one, so strap it. This, of course, would be none other than Spidey Pool. Peter Parker shipped with Wade Wilson, aka Deadpool. I'm definitely biased about this one as I consider myself a fan of each of the following. All Spider-Man media types, the Deadpool comics and movies, and the X-Men movies. And I can easily relate to them and understand why someone may ship this particular pairing, as I'm well versed in the characters and stories. This is also the only ship that actually has a shipping wiki page, which made my work much easier even though I didn't have much work to begin with. This pairing notably grew in popularity in 2016 when the duo got their own spin-off story, titled Spider-Man slash Deadpool. Their similar funny man personalities and their quick wits are what really made fans think they were a good fit. They were both humorous characters who often threw quips at each other and villains in battle, and that sass is truly just an authentic Spider-Man feature that fans saw in Deadpool. This, combined with their dynamic, is what made fans connect with this pairing so deeply. My cat is next to me, and she's distracting me from recording. Oh my god. I need my cat to not... Here, listen. I don't know if you could hear that, but that, that's my cat. I need my cat to move. Move! I'm on my bed, so she's like... Climbing all over me. What casual fans of these characters may not know is that Spidey Pool is actually considered semi canon. What this means is that there is a crush present in the dynamic, but it's one sided according to canon. For this particular pairing, Wade canonically is attracted to Peter. I'm so sorry if you can hear my cat purring in the background. I can't get her to stay in one spot away from me, so I apologize for that. Wade is canonically attracted to Peter, something that stemmed from his idolization of the Spider-Man superhero, and is actually considered a quote-unquote free pass on his list he made with his wife. However, Peter seems to not return the feelings and is generally portrayed as being frustrated by Wade, quite the opposite of being attracted to him. Nonetheless, the two canonically work together quite often, and seem to be friends despite this. It is also important to note that almost all Spidey Pool shippers make it clear that they specifically do not ship Wade with the MCU's Peter, as that would make a clearly uncomfortable age gap. And yes, that includes me. Shippers often agree on the idea that if Peter and Wade were canon, the live-action version of Peter should be portrayed by Andrew Garfield to not only fix the age gap problem, but also to satisfy Andrew Garfield's wishes to play a bisexual Spider-Man. I mean, it wouldn't be the first time he kissed Ryan Reynolds. And with that, I've covered all the Spider-Man slash ships that the shipping wiki gave me. Overall, I really do hope that Peter Parker is written to be bisexual in some capacity in the future, and I would honestly be really happy if that was done with any ship, not just the ones I've gone over in this video. I heard there's a faint whisper of bringing Andrew Garfield back for a third Amazing Spider-Man film, and I'm praying that happens, and this time Sony listens to his feedback. I've said it before, and I'll say it over and over again. If an actor has a headcanon for a character they play, then it stands as canon for that version of the character forever and ever. Who knows if there will actually be a third Amazing Spider-Man film and- OW! Who knows if there will actually be a third Amazing Spider-Man film and who knows if we ever get LGBT Spider-Man. It's all so hard to predict, but for now, one guy can dream, can't he? This video was so fun to make, and I hope to do more similar to it in the future. I hope it was fun for you to watch. And as I said, please feel free to correct me in the comments if I was incorrect about anything. 
As this video is about ships, I ask you to not start any ship wars or breed negativity on my page. This video was just made for fun and I hope to keep it that way. And with that, stay safe and stay cool. This has been Dino Spunk, and I'll see you all next time.